Hey guys, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel. I'm going to take a break from my skateboard project to bring you some breaking news. And this is regarding Fender and the NAM convention coming up at the beginning of next year. So there's a video that was sent out uh, just recently to like media folks, and I guess it was sent out in place of a regular press release. And the video is really a conversation between the CEO of Fender, Andy Mooney, and then CPR certified trumpet player John Melenzik, who also happens to be the president of NAM. Uh, that's the National Association of Music Merchants. And there were several big things that were said in this video, big pieces of news, and there was also one little detail that was included in there too that might seem like a small detail, but I think it's actually very telling for the future of the guitar industry. And my understanding is that this video is not going to be released to the public, so I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. But anyway, we'll go ahead and I'll share all these details with you. But of course, real quick guys, if you enjoy videos like this, checking out cool new guitars and also staying up on all the latest news in the guitar universe and you've not already subscribed for some reason, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into the first big piece of news, which is that Fender is going to be returning to the NAMM show in 2025. And although they did not specify this in the video, I believe it is not just Fender, but it is Fender plus all of the Fender sub-brands. So we're talking Jackson, EVH, all that stuff. And honestly, this really is a big surprise because since 2021, which was this weird like online only NAM event, uh, Fender has not been at NAM, and everyone's understanding was that that was a permanent change. And it wasn't just Fender, but Fender and Gibson and a lot of the big companies, they stopped going to NAM, And it was thought that this was really a permanent change because so many changes had taken place in the industry and it seemed to be a lot less about the old school business model of working with distributors and so forth. Like a few years ago, Fender started doing this thing where you could buy direct, you could buy products directly from Fender. You didn't have to go through a dealer or a distributor or anything like that. So the traditional business model of you know brick and mortar stores where you go in person to a store and that store is a retailer that bought from a distributor and the distributor bought from the manufacturer and all this stuff. A lot of companies have just been really getting away from that and you know that has not changed. The business continues to go in that direction. And so people were thinking like, hey, you know, Fender, they have to spend all this money to go to the NAM show. And Fender, at this point, they've already built, you know, it's, it's an established company. They've already built these relationships. They don't need to go to a big convention and like make new business deals or anything like that. And that change in the business model combined with the fact that they're more than ever, they're using social media people and influencers and so forth to do their marketing and promotion for them as opposed to doing it themselves. And just, you know, in the past five or 10 years, the whole, the whole music instrument industry has changed so much, it just seemed like, you know, NAM was not necessary anymore, especially for these big established companies. But in this new video, Andy Mooney from Fender, he specified that they really missed being able to go in person to a big convention like this and, you know, build those relationships and make those business deals. And he said that it wasn't just good for Fender to be able to do that, but he thought it was actually going to be good for the entire industry, not just Fender on its own. And to be honest, I wish that he had talked about that in a little bit more detail, like why he thought that, and specifically why companies needed to have those in-person meetings in order to have that help the industry. Uh, you know, why does he think that they need to go to like one event all together, especially a huge overwhelming, you know, arguably overwhelming event like NAM? What's the benefit of that as opposed to just making direct relationships with individual companies throughout the year? I don't fully understand that. I'm not really sure where he was coming from with that. But, I mean, he is, he's the CEO of Fender, so I would assume he knows what he's talking about. Now, another thing that both of the guys in the video talked about was the increased reliance and importance of uh, reliance on and importance of social media influencers and that's just the new way of getting the word out about new products and marketing and so forth last year actually uh, this year in january i went to this specific like social media influencer event at nam or it was right after nam actually 
And it was kind of, you know, a networking mixer type of event, right? And so it seems like NAM is going to go even further in that direction, really trying to get as many of those people uh, to show up to NAM and cover the event as possible. For better or for worse, that seems to be a huge part of just the way products are marketed now, whether you're talking about the musical uh, instrument industry or other industries, and it doesn't seem to be changing. That seems to be something that is really sticking around. Uh, so that's not surprising. But now one thing that was really interesting uh, in the video that John uh, Melenzik talked about, and he kind of said this in passing, but I think it's actually a really big deal, is he was saying how NAM wants to do a better job of making it an international event. And they want to really go out of their way and do a better job of getting, you know, overseas companies and, and international companies to NAM and making it so the companies want to be there and it really benefits them to be there. That was really interesting to me and that was kind of actually towards the end of the video. And think about it, right? This tracks perfectly with everything that we've been seeing within the guitar industry in the past few years, right? These kind of upstart uh, overseas companies, they are for sale on Amazon or eBay and they suddenly become popular through YouTube or whatever, uh, different forms of social media and it's, it's usually a you know, direct customer type of situation where the company, either they have a factory, it's like the manufacturer selling direct to the company, and they have a, a close, um, you know, a, a very small feedback loop. So they hear things from the customers and they're able to make changes very quickly and continue to, to give the customer more of what they want. And so over the course of two or three years, you know, you get a guitar brand that becomes really, really popular. You know, Firefly is a good example of this, or Earch or something like that. And we've been seeing more and more and more of that. And the fact that NAM is sort of recognizing this shift in the industry, and, you know, they want to try and get more of those companies coming in, uh, that, that really says a lot to me that uh, this is not just like a fad or a little trend that we're going through, but this is, again, the industry is continuing to shift towards that direction. Now, something I think about uh, a lot, you know, this conversation was between, you know, NAM and Fender. How does that help Fender? Well, in the case of Fender, I can see it helping because Fender does manufacturing overseas for some of their different models. Of course, they have uh, Squire and things like that. And even a lot of the, the main Fender products are not necessarily made in the USA. Some of them are made in Mexico. Some of them are made in, in uh, Japan, right? So I, I can see that I can see that benefiting Fender specifically, but some of the other companies, um, Gibson is the obvious example. Uh, does that benefit Gibson? I don't think it does, but maybe that doesn't really matter. I mean, Gibson is is probably just going to continue doing what they've been doing for decades. Um, but these other companies coming in from overseas, they're going to continue to provide more and more competition for some of the established companies. So in some cases where if it's a manufacturer working with an American company, I can see that being a big benefit. If it's direct competition, well, that's just more competition. So maybe it'll make it harder for the companies, but in the end, uh, the customers will benefit from that. So that's cool. But a lot of this, you know, is speculation on my part. So, you know, we've heard this big news. It's exciting. I'm excited to see Fender back at NAMM, and obviously I'm a big, you know, Jackson fan and all the shredder guitars and everything. I want to see that stuff again. So I'm excited to see Fender back at NAMM, but it's going to be interesting to see how all of this stuff plays out over the next half a year, you know, leading up to January 2025. Now, speaking of Gibson, right, this raises the big question. Fender's coming back. Is Gibson going to come back? I have not heard any news about that. I don't really know. Maybe they won't be back in 2025. But I would be really surprised. I don't think Gibson is, I don't think they want to be known as the only major company that's not back at NAM. So, uh, you know, maybe they won't be back in 2025, but 2026, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, they don't want to stand out like that. I think in a way it's kind of like bad, you know, bad publicity. It's like, what's the matter, Gibson? Aren't you proud of your new products? Are you ashamed? Go back to NAM. I dare you. So the last thing I'll say about this is, uh, you know, the guitar industry aside, the NAM convention itself, this is a really good sign for the convention itself because I think a lot of people were speculating like, man, you know, NAM is never really going to come back after COVID. Like the, the uh, convention was really 
fundamentally changed after that. And a lot of companies, or at least so I thought, so a lot of people thought, a lot of companies just didn't, uh, you know, they maybe learned a lesson that NAM wasn't as valuable as they thought it was. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe that was all incorrect. Maybe we really do need NAM. So uh, I think overall, this is a big win for NAM. And of course, it's a big win for anybody who enjoys going to the convention and seeing all the cool new products. Okay, guys, that is the video. Let me know what you think of all of this stuff. I really want to know your thoughts on this video. Let me know all that down in the comments section below. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you very soon.